Dr. Arvinsky and Dr. Kirk, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in this report, our surgical strategy for extensive RTK aneurysm is presented. We have no disclosures. The definition of the extensive thoracic aortic aneurysm is that the aneurysm which required replacement extends beyond at least two portions of the thoracic aorta, including the aortic arch, descending aorta, or thoracic abdominal aorta. Normally, from the mid sternum, we can reach the arch aneurysm distally at the level of carina. However, in the case of the extensive aortic aneurysm, we should have additional approaches. There have been three surgical strategies for these aneurysms. First is staged replacement using elephant trunk. Second is one stage operation with a big incisions. A finally staged or one stage hybrid surgeries using endovascular technique. From October 1999 to September 2011, 490 total arch replacements was done in our institute. Among them, 29 patients had one-stage surgeries, and 81 had stage multiple surgeries. Patients' age, age ranged from 27 to 82 years. Mean age was 63 years old. The pathology of the diseased aorta was non-dissecting aneurysm in 11 patients, aortic dissection in 18 patients. There were 11 marfan patients, and the four had annual aortic ectasias. Two patients needed emergency surgery due to the rupture of the aneurysm or dissection. With regard to the preoperative brain complications, one had an epidural hematoma, one had a TIA, and two had a stroke. Six had a chronic kidney disease, two patients were diagnosed to have a coagulopathy. The average standard euro score was nine, ranging from five to 15. In a prior operation, 12 had ascending aortic replacement for acute type A dissections. Three had endovascular stenting, three had a triple A grafting, two had patients had undergone the bentor procedures, and one had aortic root replacement with valve sparing. The extent of the replacement was from the aortic root, ascending aorta, arch to the middle descending aorta in four patients. Ascending aorta, arch to the middle descending aorta in 17, and from the ascending aorta, aorta down to the abdominal aorta in eight patients. <coughs> Approach to the aneurysm was posterior lateral thoracotomy in 16 patients. Posterior lateral thoracotomy extended to the retroperitoneal space in seven, middle sternotomy and the left pleurotomy in three, anterior lateral thoracotomy with partial lower sternotomy in two, and crumb shell incision in one. The partial sternotomy and the crumb shell incision was utilized to expose the aortic root. The detail of the procedure of a total arch replacement through the left thoracotomy is shown here. Cardiopulmonary <coughs> bypass was established by femoral femoral. The patient was cooled down to the 30 degrees at the tympanic temperature, and then the ascent descending aorta was clamped. The proximal aorta was opened and the undergrade cerebral perfusion using three burn tip cannula was started. Also, undergrade cardioplegia with a balloon catheter was given into the ascending aorta. The aortic arch was reconstructed using, using four branches. Finally, descending aorta was anastomosed. The circular arrest of the lower body was not necessary. Arterial inflow for the cardiopulmonary bypass was consisted with a femoral artery in 15 patients, ascending aorta and femoral artery in seven, descending aorta or abdominal artery in five, and ascending aorta in two. Site of uh, venous drainage was femoral vein in 10 patients, pulmonary artery in eight, femoral vein with the pulmonary artery in six, and the right atrium with femoral vein or pulmonary artery in five. This is a case who had aortic replacement from the arch to the this abdominal aorta using left posterior lateral <coughs> and lateral peritoneal approaches. The patient was 63 years old male, had undergone replacement of the ascending aorta because of the acute type A dissections. 
he had a three channel dissection in the descending aorta. In this particular case, we started from the below to uh, reduce the bypass time. So initially, infrarenal portion of the abdominal aorta was replaced through the retroperitoneal space. Then the cardiopulmonary bypass was started and the graft, with the graft cannulation. We construct the abdominal visceral arteries, the intercostal artery, and the heart beating. Finally, the aorta was replaced from the previous graft to the descending aorta. The surgery was long enough, 12 hours. The bypass time was four hours. Cerebral protection was 75 minutes. Cardiac ischemia was 67 minutes. And the visceral perfusion time was 70 minutes. He was extubated next morning without any sequel. This is a 67 year old female who had annual aortic ectasia with dilatation of the ascending aorta and uh, chronic type B dissections. The chest was entered until lateral partial sternotomies. She underwent a replacement of the aorta from the ST junction to the lower descending aorta with the reconstruction of the arch vessels and two pairs of intercostal arteries. Mean cardiopulmonary bypass time was 226 minutes. Myocardial ischemia time was 85 minutes. Minimum tempera uh, tympanic temperature was 23 degrees of Celsius. In 25 patients, duration of antigrade cerebral perfusion time was 79 minutes, and brain circulatory arrest time was 38 minutes in four patients. Same had the um, individual visceral perfusions. Intercostal artery was reconstructed in 12 patients and the visceral arteries, including inferior mesenteric artery, were reconstructed in seven patients. ST junction was plicated in two, aortic root replacement with valve sparing was done in one, and aortic valve replacement was done in one. There were three hospital deaths. One patient who had a ruptured aneurysm and a cardiac arrest preoperatively died immediately <coughs> after operation. One died, uh, two weeks after surgery because of ruptured infected aneurysm in the descending aorta. And one died with coagulopathy, uh, died during hospitalization from the traumatic brain contusions. The total hospital mortality was 9.9%. Follow-up was 100%, average uh, 28 months up to 83 months. During follow-up, later mortality occurred in three patients. One died of the rupture of a pre-existing middle cerebral artery aneurysm. One died of a pneumonia, and 75 patients, uh, all patients without, with chronic renal failure, died of a residual distal aneurysm after 73 months. A transient neurological deficit was manifested was in one, but no other brain complication was noted. One who underwent extended the replacement to the thoracoabdominal aorta of the temporary paraparesis and ischemic colitis, but they had recovered completely. Average duration of ventilation support was 21 hours, and the respiratory failure was observed in three patients. The length of ICU stay was 3.8 days. Uh, this is the basic slide, sorry. On the other hand, 81 patients underwent a stage surgery in our institute Numerous surgical procedures were tried in various portions of the thoracic aorta. The problem here is that the mortality in the first stage and the mortality between was unknown. However, the important thing is that there have been significant mortalities until the patient had replaced the disease aorta completely. Actual survival in one stage patients at five years was 81% and the freedom from the aortic event was 96% at five years. So this is our conclusion, ladies and gentlemen. Result of the surgery of, of the extensive lesions of thoracic aorta was satisfactory in one stage strategies. One stage surgery is one of the choice of the treatment after careful investigation of the patient. Thank you very much.